Hi everybody and welcome to this week's episode of sketch to see Here I am again with Chris, our electrical engineer and partial designer of the electrical system on mm -hmm. this boat. You stepped into this project a few years after inception. Yes. Um, and we, in this viewer requested episode, we are going to talk all about the power consumption on board, both the productivity and its use and what draws so much power on this vessel and how much can we actually produce. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed the episode. All right, so here we are up at our sea zone control and our master boat controls are on the other side. And Chris, what are our biggest consumers of power on this boat? The biggest consumer by far is the air conditioning system, yep. um, which is split into every cabin on the boat. Um, after that, we have two uh, hot water cylinders that are 40 gallons each, and they draw about three kilowatts each, which is roughly the same amount of power as the two big air conditioning units used in the salon. Um, we have a six kilowatt jacuzzi heater um, for the hot tub that's split into two three kilowatt elements so we can manage the power use on that. And then obviously the main ovens in the galley are a huge power drawer as well. Um, I think they're about five, five to eight kilowatts depending wow. on what you're cooking in. And what about the dive compressor? The dive compressor is a reasonably high load as well, um, but that's used, you know, not that often, so we don't count it as one of the high use items on the boat. The oven, the air conditioning, the hot water cylinders are everyday loads right. that we and have to manage. If we had all of those running at the same time, what do you guesstimate that would draw? Um, we've got well, we've got two 24 kilowatt generators, so we can run 48 kilowatts combined off the generators. Um, if we had, actually, that's one thing that I didn't mention was the water makers are also a very high um, draw item. I would say if we turned everything on on the boat, um, you'd be pushing close to 100 kilowatts of power. Wow! So we can run about 50% of the loads on the boat, which is more than enough to be able to manage the air conditioning and the cooking and the water making and the jacuzziing and everything that we need to do. Wow, so if we, so that's how much energy we can actually consume if we had everything on. Yeah. How much energy can we produce if we have everything on? Okay, so we obviously use the generators to charge the batteries as their main function. And then once the batteries are charged up to 100%, then we switch over to inverter mode like we're in at the moment. So as you can see down here, the inverters are powering the inverter bus and the whole boat is on the inverter bus, except for battery charges are on the main bus. Um, if you come over to the master vault screen here, you can see our state of charge is 98% and we are drawing 420 amps. Now that 420 amps is at 24 volts DC, so that's coming off the batteries. Um, with our overall house battery capacity running at this high load, we could run the boat for approximately five to six hours. But if you go into our AC loads under control. So he's just playing with the C-zone panel now you can see that we have a lot of air conditioning on as well as one water maker which is during 36 amps. Now the 36 amps that this is monitoring here is AC as well so you've got to remember that it's a different calculation from the DC amps. And we currently do not have a generator or anything on right now do we? No. no so we're running a water maker off of batteries? Yes we're running one of the big water makers off batteries, we're running one hot water cylinder we're running air conditioning throughout the boat, refrigeration, um, all the comforts. All the home. hotel loads. All the hotel loads. Now, when we go down into a um, economical mode that we've been doing over the last week as we've been testing, we can get this battery current down to about 150 to 200 amps, depending on when the appliances are cycling. Um, if we get it down to 150 amps average, we can do 10 to 12 hours running off the batteries. 
Right, which is exactly what this boat was designed for because the solar on a good day, which obviously today is not that day as we have a typhoon mm. coming in the next few hours and we're on the boat. Yeah. Um, but the solar can put in approximately 150 amps. Correct. So over a 10 hour sun period, we can charge the batteries almost entirely back up again. So that's 1500 right. amp hours replaced back into the battery bank. Or we can run the boat completely silently Absolutely. without having anything on. Absolutely. So the solar charge is replacing what's used by the inverters. So you kind of get a, um, a net deficit. So if we have a 300 amp drawer on the boat and we're charging at 150 amps of solar, we're only taking 150 amps off the battery. So we're effectively halving our load with the solar on the boat. Right. I think that's quite impressive to be able to run a boat this size with this many features. And if you're being mindful about how you're using your energy mm -hmm. to actually be able to just enjoy it yeah. and not worry too much about it and not have to burn a lot of diesel. Absolutely. So when we're in a most economical mode, we will be running the boat with two charging periods, once in the morning and once in the evening, um, which is a logical time to run the generators anyway, because it's your high load cooking. It's likely to be when you're using the galley. Um, and when we go what, into what are you these... talking about high load cooking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when we go into this mode, um, we can charge up the batteries with the seven battery charges that are targeted on the house bank. Um, we can charge up the bank very quickly. Two and a half hours, we can go from our lowest state of charge up to fully charged. So the idea there is we do, you know, two to three hours in the morning, depending on what we're using, and then cycle through the day without using any generator power. And then in the evening, we do another fast charge. When we make water, we run the ovens, we fill the dive bottles, anything we need to do at that laundry time. Laundry machines. Laundry machines, dishwashers and then we shut down again for the evening. So we have done this a few times already and with all the air conditioning on board, we've made it through the night. Yes, we have. We've um, made it just the battery night. power. Yeah. Interestingly enough, the way the boat's designed um, in your master cabin, you actually can't hear any generator noise. So we do have the ability to kind of cater the day to your needs as an owner. If you're going to be entertaining in the cockpit late at night, it might not be a, appropriate to run the generators for cooking. So we can actually run the main ovens or the air conditioning off the inverters because we've got 14 kilowatts of inverter power um, and they'll do double their load for, I think it's two minutes. So <laughs> as an oven element heats up before it settles down, right. we have the ability to ride that out. So, you know, in that sort of mode, we would say, right, um, it's not going to be appropriate to run the generators between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. So we would change our mode for the day and we would bring our fast charge cycle earlier into the afternoon to give us that ability to cycle through the evening um, noise free. And what would you say to all those people that say we have more than enough deck space to go fully electric? Fully electric has its limitations mainly around redundancy. So the reason that we have generators on the boat as well as battery power is your intentions are to cruise the world and go into some very remote places. And just like anything on a boat, it breaks. And being prepared for that breakage is very important. So we have multiple layers of redundancy designed in this boat. As we discussed before, we can go you know, out of a 24 hour day, if we're running the boat economically, we can go 20 hours a day without running the generators. Now that's in a very hot climate as well. We're sitting in China, which is, you know, low to mid thirties every day. If you're in a, a cooler climate, you can probably go double that length of time because the air conditioning being the biggest load. But you definitely, in my view, you need a generator. And I think even a lot of the most modern um, electric propulsion boats and boats of this caliber will still have a backup generator. And the idea, the aim of the game is just to use it as less as possible. Right, and we've managed to get this down to using the boat as we please, which is full aircon in this crazy heat. Yeah. Um, and using the ovens to prepare gourmet meals. Right, yeah. Don't Three think hours low and slow. Underfed <laughs> on this boat. Um, and we've got it down to approximately three hours a day, maybe yep. four yep. on a bad day. Mm -hmm. um, and we just try and. Uh, run the water makers and do the laundry and do everything like that during those given periods. Correct. 
And yes, we actually do use a dryer because do you think any of the clothes would stay on the lifelines out here? Um, currently, it is blowing 25 or so. It's been gusting up to 35 um, while this is coming through. So if we have both alternators running, so both engines, both gen sets, all the solar pumping in at peak, mm -hmm. we're charging 1,200 amps? Between 1,100 and 1,200 amps at 24 volts going into the batteries. Um, these batteries, the Mastervolt uh, 5524s, I think is the model number, they are capable of 1C charging, which is one times their capacity. So 12 batteries, 200 amps per battery, you could charge this battery bank at 2,400 amps. That's so we're, nuts. We're charging it at approximately half its maximum, um, which is still uh, a lot of charge. Right. So as a, as a power plant in overall, mm -hmm. this boat has a crazy capacity to produce and consume energy. Absolutely. Um, as you can see now, we're using a lot of power. You know, 407 amps at 24 volts running all of these loads is um, pretty significant. And being able to charge that back, being able to replace it quickly is equally important as being able to use it. Um, right, so we're just about to go downstairs and start making some dinner. So would you mind flipping on one of the generators? Yeah, absolutely. So now that we have the generator starting into C zone, we can add any level of automation we want to the system. So we can trigger the batteries to start off a low state of charge, we can trigger them to start on a high power consumption from the inverters, uh, whatever we want to do. So we're just going to power here, port generator start, turn that on, and you can come over here. There we are, it's just fired up. Them come online. And then we can go into our AC main section. And as you can see, we have power available up here now on the generator bus. So we can bring the power down onto the inverter bus and onto the main bus to charge the batteries. And now we are feeding the battery charges and we're also feeding the inverter bus that was previously supplied from the batteries and we go back into a charging mode with the depth of power to be able to run the ovens, run more water makers, make water, whatever we need to do. So if I jump back over to this Mastervolt screen, what's, uh, what is it showing us now? At the moment we've got 240 amps of charge, so the first charge is to turn on are always the three standalone mass chargers. Um, so the 300 amps that they're outputting less the 60 amps, which is our general house draw on the batteries, is giving us a positive increase into the bank of 240 amps. Now, So we have not turned over or turned off any of the hotel loads. All we did was no, turn on a generator. Exactly, we turned on both the generators, which are paralleled together, giving us a combined output of 48 kilowatts as required and now you can see here the combi masters have switched over into charger mode from inverter mode and we're now putting in 640 amps of charge so our general house draw on the boat dc wise is around 40 to 60 amps depending on what we're doing we're coming into the evening now so we've got a lot more lighting um, we've got some underwater lights on some of the cool stuff um, so yeah, those seven battery chargers are 100 amps each. Um, so in this mode, we can charge 700 amps off the AC battery chargers. As you mentioned, we've got the solar and the alternators on top of that, which gives us our 1100 to 1200 amp range if we were motoring out of here and it wasn't such a shit. So here we are back down in one of our technical spaces. And this is actually quite a unique space here because we have what, Chris? You have uh, the new release of Mastervolt Combi Masters, and these are three and a half kilowatt each, um, 3,500 watts. And the unique thing about these units is they were specifically designed for the application that we require. 
which is a split phase parallel configuration. So we have on this boat we run 230 volts, 110 volts as well. So to get our 230 volts we have two phases, um, which is a, a different way of making it up from Western countries like, um, like New Zealand where I come from or Europe, it's made up of a phase and a neutral. Uh, we're making this up out of two phases. So each of these combi masters we've got two units for line one, we've got two units for line two. After they come together and make their 230 volts, they are then paralleled and we output and feed the main bus. Um, there's quite a lot of smarts going on behind the scenes to make that happen because each of these things are generating their own singular source of AC power that is then um, combined with its friend and then paralleled together across four units. Um, and as we are switching between big discharges and high charging rates, we're certainly putting these new units to the test. And something I particularly like about this is it is a seamless transition between generator power and inverter power. Correct. correct. That's right. So we go from what they call pass through mode and then as the generator power or the shore power um, detaches from the bus, the units automatically transfer into inverter mode which will feed the, the loads and then if there's an AC source of power present, whether that be generator or shore power, the units will click back over into charging mode and start charging. Nice. And all of this is pre-programmed from MasterVolt or is that something that we did? No, that's something that we do because these units can be used as standalone um, 110 volt inverters. Um, people will buy one of these for their boat. It's only when you buy two that you can run them in split phase and you buy four you can run them in split phase parallel but that's a behind the scenes configuration that we've had to work with MasterVolt to achieve. Okay, and why did we have to do that? Um, because the way the boat has been designed, um, we have a mixture of your 110 volt outlets on the boat, and then we also have you know, a lot of high loads. So having the whole boat at 110 volts wouldn't be appropriate. Um, and you being from that part of the world, you know you've got 110 volt outlets around the boat. So right. the combination of 230 volt uh, made up of split phase is appropriate for the boat. Yes. So for the viewers who have asked which person can possibly fit into this compartment, it is Chris, and Chris is six foot one. <laughs> so there you go. It is quite a large, generous, and very well organized space, as I've shown in the technical tour of the vessel. I really hope you guys enjoyed that episode. As you can see, Chris is a wealth of information about all things electrical on this boat, having been part of this program for so long now. Unfortunately, I did have to break it up into two episodes, so you'll just have to stay tuned and see how we use our solar and what we do with that side of the system next week's episode. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. We'd really appreciate it. One small click from you will go a long way for us. And if you're not already, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And remember, if you just want to talk about boats or have any questions, you can always reach out to me at sketch2see at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.